Good afternoon. I'm Kevin Walker, Senior Vice President of Public Policy for the Overland Park Chamber of Commerce. With me today is Joy Coaston, a candidate for Johnson County Community College Board of Trustees. Today we're going to spend some time getting to know Joy and learn about her candidacy and the priorities she has if elected to the Board of Trustees. Joy, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, let's start. Just uh, take a couple of minutes and tell us about yourself and why you're running for the Board of Trustees. Okay. Well, um, you know, my husband and I have lived in Johnson County for over 45 years. Uh, we have watched over these 45 years as Johnson County Community College has grown to be the institution that it is today. When it started 50 years ago, it was out here in no man's land, uh, offering a few programs that would enhance the workforce for our, the businesses in our community. And we've just watched it grow uh, over the years, and we've been fascinated by it. But we've both also taken classes at Johnson County Community College, and we've both taught at Johnson County Community College as adjunct faculty members. Uh, after I stayed at home with my kids uh, when they were little, for about seven years, when they started uh, elementary school, I decided to go back to school, and I took classes at Johnson County Community College so that I could enter an educational program at Avila College to get my teaching certificate. Uh, I needed to fill in some spaces in my uh, transcript before they would accept me for the teaching program at Avila. So I, I took some classes over here, and they were just the most amazing classes. The teachers were fantastic, and uh, of course, as an adult learner, I, I learned very differently than I did as someone right out of high school. At any rate, that was the beginning of my journey uh, to become an educator. And from uh, my time at Johnson County Community College, I went on to earn a, a master's and PhD from the University of Kansas. Uh, I've taught at Washburn University as a faculty member there, as well as all three campuses at KU, including the Med, the Med Center, the Department of Family Medicine, where I was a research assistant. And then also I served as assistant dean of the graduate, at K, graduate school at KU. Um, so over the course of the last 25 years, I have seen higher education on many, many levels, not only as a student, but also as a faculty member and as someone who understands that there are a lot of different stakeholders who come to the table to make sure that our, our school is really ready for the 21st century. Wonderful. Tell me a little bit about your top three agenda priorities if you're elected to a, a board of trustees. Okay. You know, probably my biggest priority is to make sure that we continue to recruit and recognize and retain the very best teachers in our region. Uh, one of the things that makes JCCC stand out is that we have experts in their fields and the class sizes are small. We want to make sure that the ratio between a tenure track faculty and adjunct faculty uh, is, is sustainable. Uh, we know that adjunct faculty uh, Workers certainly bring tremendous expertise to uh, the college experience, uh, but we also know that, that uh, not being able to have tenure track faculty uh, more and more uh, uh, kind of upsets the balance of what needs to happen at the college level. So um, I, I hope that we can really think about how we're, how we're retaining those, those instructors, whether they're full-time tenure track faculty or whether they're adjunct. Uh, so that's probably my, my biggest priority, to make sure we have the best teachers in the region. Second, I want to make sure that we work with the business community so that we understand what's happening in real time in today's workforce and understand the shortcomings that workers have when it comes to their skill set. We know that the workplace is changing incredibly fast and um, automation is making that happen. Uh, just logistically uh, speaking in terms of how business need, need to uh, to alter the ways of doing things and thinking, marketing, uh, virtual <laughs> activities. Uh, we know that skill sets have to be enhanced and changed at all levels. So I think Johnson County Community Co College offers us a tremendous opportunity to work in partnership with our business community to make sure that we have just-in-time training when they need it and build the workforce that we need here in Johnson County. With respect to paying for the cost of educating the college's students, where do you stand regarding tuition increases versus mill levy increases, and what's the appropriate way to balance those interests? You know, I always hear this, this argument about the, the balancing the two, and it is an incredibly important conversation to have. 
Um, but I looked at even my own tax bill of the last six years, and the college to the college uh, mill level mill levy has gone down every year for the last six years. Currently, my mill levy for Johnson County Community College is under one percent of what I pay in my property taxes. Uh, now that doesn't sound like a lot to me. Now it might be a lot to someone who's on a really fixed income. So I don't want to I don't want to brush that aside. But I do want to really emphasize the idea that as a community college, it really is incumbent upon all community members to have some skin in the game. That this is about educating the citizens of our community as well as the workforce of our community. And also we want to make sure that the tuition is affordable for all students. And uh, oftentimes we find students uh, who come to Johnson County Community College have, have struggled elsewhere and they really do need an advantage of being able to take top-notch courses from top-notch professors, but also they need some financial assistance. So I think striking that balance is incredibly important. Uh, but I, I think that that's something that the trustees have done a pretty good job of over the years, and I would, I would continue to really try to reconcile those two tensions. Uh, but as someone who pays uh, that mill levy, I'm quite happy to uh, put in my fair share to make sure that we have an educated workforce that stays. You've touched on uh, the needs of the business community a little bit, and this question gets to that. So, you know, currently we're experiencing low unemployment rates and employers are struggling to find qualified workers, especially in the skilled and technical trades. What role do you think Johnson County Community College uh, should play with regard to workforce development? Oh, I think we should be partners in that, in that development. I think we need to look at all of the different opportunities that we can create between uh, not just business owners and industry leaders, but also other uh, partners across the state and the region to see what it is we need to offer to make sure that we can not only create those programs, but make sure there's a clear pathway for every student to find a good paying job when they leave the halls of Johnson County Community College. Um, I think that, that uh, there are pl plenty of things that Dr. Bound, the new president of JCC, is thinking about in terms of what those partnerships need to look like. Um, but I do think that the, the college has a very important role to play in developing those relationships and understanding what it is we need to do as a community college to prepare for the future. And my next question gets to the students that are coming into the university. What do you see as the key aspect of JCCC's coordination with our high schools, uh, other universities in the area, and other post-secondary educational institutions? Well, you know, JCCC offers a pathway for students to go in many, many different directions. Uh, one of the things is someone who has taught at uh, KU and, and Washburn, other higher uh, institutions of higher education, I can tell you that not every student who comes through the halls of JCCC should be finding a pathway to a four-year institution. They should be finding a pathway to a really good, rewarding job that pays them a sustainable wage so they can live right here in Johnson County. We know that right now in Johnson County, a family of four has to have an earning potential of about $56,000 in order to live within the confines of our county. Now that means that we have to be really thinking about well, what are those pathways to recruit students to think about different kinds of avenues other than just a four-year degree. Not that there is anything wrong with a four-year degree. In fact, I have many degrees. I, I'm a strong believer in education at, at all levels. But I think that we have to begin to talk more openly about all of the different opportunities that there are for students. Uh, there are opportunities that I would have never imagined as, as a young student, uh, such as being a railroad conductor or making sure that I understood the technology necessary to maintain uh, big buildings uh, in our community. There are technical programs at Johnson County Community College that are absolutely top-notch and they prepare students for different kinds of careers that will sustain them and their families in, in their lifetime. What is your vision for the college uh, 10 years from now? Oh my, 10 years from now, that's, a, that's such a challenge. Um, you know, I would hope that we would just continue to be the, the gold standard for what community colleges should be. I know that we have a very, very strong national reputation uh, we have earned that reputation because of the things that we, the college has done in the past 50 years, and I would hope that we would continue to do that. But we'll do that by being innovative and by, 
by being creative and, and by being uh, really forward thinking about what we need to do to build the, the workforce of the future. In the next 10 years, the workforce is going to change even more dramatically than it has in the last 10. So I think that it will just be in, in our best interest to really think about, well, how do we change with the times and how do we make sure that our programs are ca capable of really um, preparing students to be uh, part of the workforce. And my last question is, tell me why you think you're uniquely qualified to serve on the Board of Trustees and why are you seeking this office? Well, I'm the only candidate who's running who has uh, such a vast uh, vast uh, experience in higher education, not only as a student, but as a faculty member, a tenure-track faculty member, an adjunct faculty member, uh, both a research assistant professor and uh, an assistant dean of a graduate school. I've seen higher education from the point of view of all stakeholders, even as a business owner. My husband and I own a business in Overland Park. We'll celebrate 25 years in business this year. We have hired many students from uh, Johnson County Community College and other institutions uh, because we know that that is the place where they get the best skills. Now I think that it's uh, important for us to look at all of those stakeholders and try to understand what their needs are and so I think that I have a perspective that not many of the, I don't know that any of the other candidates have. Um, I also think that I just, um, I, I'm just a passionate person about our community uh, and making sure that we have a robust educational system that's always afforded to the people who live in Johnson County. Well, Joy, I appreciate you spending some time with us today. Um, before we close, I want to give you a chance to uh, provide any final thoughts you'd like to provide. Thank you so much, Kevin. I really appreciate being here. And I, you know, I, I ran for this office because I absolutely believe in public education. I believe that it prepares our citizens uh, to be good citizens. It is truly the foundation of our society. It's a place where you sit in a room with people who didn't grow up like you, who don't look like you, who maybe don't act like you, and you have to sit in that room and really think about their own their perspectives and about yours. I think that this is an opportunity for me to give back to my community, and I'm excited to do that in the, in, within the, the role of being a trustee. So I would appreciate your vote. Well, thank you again. Just a reminder that advanced voting by mail begins on Wednesday, October 13th. Advanced voting in person begins on Saturday, October 23rd, and of course, Election Day is Tuesday, November 2nd.